a fly that I call the Wedding Ring um, Quildagon. Um, it's kind of a variation of the Devin Olson Quildagon um, heat ties that I find works really well out here um, in the Pacific Northwest. Um, kind of starting things off with a Vivas uh, GSP gel spun thread. Um, it's white. Um, it really only matters that it's a white thread. You could use um, nano silk or something like that as well. But I like to use this because it keeps the bodies really thin so you get that really good sinking ability. Um, the next thing up is these two kind of neon Sharpies. Um, I like to use a pink and an orange for this. Um, and then I use a Solar Res UV resin. You could use anything, the Loon products work pretty well as well. This is a thin hard that I like. Um, I have a Hannock bead here. Today I'm gonna do a silver bead version. Um, I like to do it also with a copper. Um, a Foley Mill 5125 and a 16. I'm tying it in this size just so you guys can see it, but um, I generally tie this in an 18 and a 20. These Foley Mill hooks run a little bit large. So 16 is really like a 14. Um, then we have Sally Hansen's Hard Nails just to finish this fly off. Um, and then I have two different colors of stripped quills here. I have golden olive and brown. I like to do the um, olive paired with a copper bead and the pink um, Sharpie. And then I'll do a brown version with a silver bead and the orange Sharpie. And that's the one I'm gonna do today um, for you guys on this video. Okay, the, I totally forgot to mention Cote de Leon. Um, this is what we're using for the tailing fiber. Um, I just bit the bullet and bought one of these from the slide in Kelly Gallup's place. Um, it's like 40 bucks for one of these. Um, and it's enough tailing fibers for basically the rest of your life. Um, you can buy those small packs, but it's like $10 for, I don't know, like eight feathers and they last quite a while. But if you just go ahead and buy this, you won't ever need to again. It's worth noting that on this fly, you could do, um, really any fiber, you, any sort of like hackle fiber you wanted for the tail. This is just cool because it's got this awesome kind of barring to it and it's stiff and so it sticks out, um, doesn't break when you catch multiple fish. Um, and these are super awesome. You can get them in different colors. I just went with this dark pardo that I think kind of works with a lot of different patterns. But again, you could use any, any sort of tailing fiber you want. So let's get into tying that fly now. Okay, so in the vise, you'll see I've attached my thread with a three millimeter bead on here. Um, it's worth noting I tie these with a bunch of different bead sizes all the way from a four millimeter, millimeter bead to tying this exact same fly um, weightless um, on a different hook. I'll just use like kind of a standard um, wet fly hook for that. I'm gonna advance my thread all the way back to about where the barb would be. Come back forward just to lay down a little bit of a thread base there. Take my Coke de Leon um, fibers here and I'm gonna pick off, oh I don't know, maybe 12 fibers. I know a lot of people you leave these real thin. Um, I have a tendency to want to see them um, and so I'll use a little bit more than others. Um, so it's about that much, so a little heavier than some people. I kind of size up how long I want the tail, kind of this way, where I'll hold it up against the hook and I'll see, okay, I want it to be the same length as the body, so I have it right about there, and then I'll transfer it to my other hand and kind of do a pinch wrap, capture that um, up on top, just like that, kind of advance it, and then I'll move and adjust this so it's right, and then I kind of pull on this to make sure I'm getting the <clears throat> length that I want. It looks about right. Kind of hold that up on top, advance my thread back to the bend, just like that. <laughs> Cut off my excess. And then at this point, I'm gonna take my orange Sharpie and color up the thread a little bit. Both sides, I'll kind of hit that. Get that orange fluorescent going. And then I'll make some wraps forward just to make sure I'm covering all. And then I'm gonna make a little hot spot on the butt of the fly. That's why it's called a wedding ring because there's this little ring of 
fluorescent orange on the back. Okay, now I have that done. So just a little, it's just a little tiny section there, just as a little tiny hot spot. I'm gonna take my um, stripped quill. I'm gonna tie this in with the, there's like a light side and a dark side. <clears throat> I'm gonna tie this in with the dark side to my left, so on towards the back of the hook, and the light side towards the front of the hook. I'll capture that, I kind of, I kind of put this in at a natural angle so that when I go to wrap it, it um, wraps on there flat. I'll advance this forward, cut off the excess. Um, you could use a lot of different things for the body on this. Um, I really like these natural stripped quills. Um, they provide this like really cool segment, segmented body look. So I'm just kind of building up the body a little bit, but I want this fly to be real thin. You'll see it's a very simple fly. So I'm gonna take my hackle pliers, attach those, and I'm just gonna make one wrap all the way around like that. And then just touching wraps all the way forward. You can see it starts providing those segmentations. Come all the way forward, capture that. Couple turns in behind, couple turns in front. Cut off my excess. Now the one thing that I forgot to mention in the kind of the materials list was that you do need some sort of brown sharpie. Um, and this is just to finish the fly off. That way the white thread isn't showing on the front. Take that, just add a little bit of brown to my thread. Pretty simple. Let that dry for a second. And then whip finish this. I like to use this fly in tandem with like another kind of attractor. Um, I've tied this kind of more of a traditional style um, uh, without the hot spot, and I find it doesn't fish as well um, without the hot spot. So I added that um, and then in tandem it's kind of nice because if you use some sort of attractor a lot of times I feel like the attractor helps pull the fish in and then they end up eating this more natural looking fly. So at this point I'm going to take my um, resin and add that to the body. I like to start on the bead of the eye because the bead, this, these slotted beads have a hole in the back. I like to fill that with resin if possible. The other thing worth noting is like a lot of people tie this and they'll put the they'll put the Sally Hansons on first and let that dry and then do the resin um because it's more durable. I agree that it's more durable but I actually prefer this fly um with it on after. I, I like the way it looks better. Um, but it's just personal preference. If you want something that's even more durable, I would do it the way they suggest with the Sally Hansons first. So I'm just kind of adding a little bit and then with the bodkin of the resin and then with the bodkin I'm coming in and I'm just kind of spreading this out and making it real even. Um, I'm trying to make that body real thin. I just want it to coat it so it's durable. And then once I have it real even, I'll kind of spin it because it kind of helps spread that fluid out in a smooth way. And then I'll hit it for just a couple seconds with that UV light. And I'll let it sit for a second just to kind of cool. I feel like sometimes it'll, if you don't do that, the fly will get kind of a matte look to it that I don't like. It won't be as clear. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this with the light. And this is a real simple fly. Like you can, you can crank these out real fast, but it's pretty effective. Um, then I'm gonna add the thorax spot on top of the Sally Hansons. I have a fly that did it earlier that I'm gonna add it to that's dry. I like to let the resin sit for a little bit longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this. I don't know if you'll be able to see this that well, but I'm just gonna add a little spot to the top with this Sally Hansons. I'll show you that. That kind of looks like there, and but that's that's the finished fly. The brown and orange wedding wedding ring quildagon. Um, find this fly real effective everywhere that I've fished it. So 
go ahead and give it a try see how it works for you again this is a size 16 which is more like a 14 on this hook and i would probably do this in smaller sizes but just so you guys can see it did it in this larger size but that's the finished fly right there give it a try